Let's talk about ATSC and how you can get it in your home and more importantly, on your network because at the end of the day, it's just data. Data packets you pick up over the radio waves. I've been attempting to make this video, video for a while um, because I'm excited to show off the power of broadcast television. So real quick, a recap of how broadcast TV works in the United States. So one, we don't have a television tax out here. In fact, all broadcast channels have to come up with their own funding and that's usually in the form of advertising. Not always though. And for the most part, as long as you pay your bills and you pay your license fee and you don't break any of the FCC's broadcast rules, anyone can set up a broadcast channel. Um, and they do. <laughs> um, but knowing that, all you need to receive those broadcast channels is a quality antenna and a, re a digital receiver. Um, a lot of TVs have the receivers built in nowadays. But even, even though a lot of the TVs do have them built in, there's that whole thing where the best place for the antenna isn't always necessarily exactly where the TV is. So how do we solve this problem in 2021, or I guess 2014, whenever this actual hardware came out? Well, let's switch over here. Now I wanna apologize for the messy layout of my place here uh, may not look bad right here but we can get over to the storage area but here's my main uh networking desk uh setup i just actually purchased this uh, little table thing from the thrift store because i liked it that is the hd home run that runs into this cable here that goes here into my our little storage area and there is the antenna the antenna just chills right here right now i don't have a permanent spot for it um but right now is not really camping season, so we won't be messing with that. In the near future, I need to find a more stable place for it. But the goal is to have it reach out to over there, out to where the... I have a little hill right here, but that's the direction where most of the major networks are. That connects to the network. I can also write files from the HD home run right into my NAS or one of my little mini servers, but I also have it running right here into my TP-Link that shares it with the rest of the house. And that allows me to access it with any network connected device. This is my living room TV. Um, it is a smart TV, but I'm not a fan of the built-in smart functions. So I have a Google, uh, Google Chromecast on there. And it boots right into there. I'm not sure how well you can see with the, flare, the gl glare. So we go into Kodi. And there's a free and open source HD Home Run plugin. And when you install that plugin, it's as simple as install the plugin, connect it to the network, it auto discovers. We can go right into the channels. Here we are. So I'm going to watch some news, KTLA news. And voila. So, yeah, the picture quality is quite good. Especially like channel 5 out here, which is broadcasting at 1080p. And I can uh, switch channels here. Let's go to ABC, the Disney affiliate out here. This is a 720p stream, but still looks pretty good. But the best part about it is not necessarily just what you can do with the TV. It's what you can do with the other hardware. That was the living room setup. Well, let's dive into what we can do with the HD Home Run on the network. So you could just install Kodi on your, your computer, which is not a terrible way to go, but there's a lot you can do. So here is my channels. This is the web UI to the tool. As you can see, I got quite a few channels here. It's registering about 167 right now. And for the most part, most of these channels work flawlessly and to play a channel for example let's go back to uh ktla copy link i can do that i can open up my terminal mpv just drop that in there and sure enough sure enough get that here get d for d on our lace 
the 1080p stream is a uh interlace stream so it's a 1080i i'm sorry 1080i or 720p both 60 frames per second so from here it probably looks pretty good because it's going through things going through things i'm gonna go ahead and close that but that's one way to to access the thing i can just click here and you can build scripts to make it easy so i have one it's like a watch tv script and i just drop the number in and for tv listings i just go I go to the internet and find a, I found this pretty good page here, zap to it that does a pretty good job of telling me what's playing in my area. So not not the amazing layback experience you'd expect from uh, from like HD Home Runs official app or even the Kodi plugin, but doing it manually has some perks. All right, so I showed you playing with MPV. But I also can record videos using curl, believe it or not. So I go curl output tv.ts. And then you just drop your URL from your HD home run. You run that. And that's right. It's just dropping the frames right onto your hard drive. Boop. So let's go FF probe. Let's look at this thing here. And look at it. It's a. 1920 by 1080 which is interlaced so it says 29.97 which really means 60 frames per second because it's interlaced when you de interlace but interlace up you get 60 frames 60 fields um it's also in 5.1 surround sound with a stereo spanish language track so if i just play this tv file See, uh, there we go. The internet today. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just exactly as it was. Completely lossless from, from the broadcasting session. Like there is no difference between the ones and zeros they broadcast out to what's on the hard drive. The file sizes can be kind of big because this is 1080i in the MPEG-2 video format, a much older format. That's actually the exact same codec that's used on DVDs obviously in a much higher resolution and higher bit rate. Well, sometimes higher bit rate, but it is uh, the exact same codec, nevertheless. So recording is pretty easy. You can use, um, you know, different command line uh, tools to dump the files, your hard drive. You can queue it up with a cron job or any other tool you have. And uh, I'm right now I'm on my computer, but I can also log into my NAS and drop the frames right in there and then come back to it later. And with a TS file, you can even like play that file with Cody on the TV while you're recording. So if you, you know, if you're about 10 minutes behind when the show starts, when you get home, you can log in with SSH, start recording, and then we get home, start playing that file and then use that makeup time to skip commercials. <laughs> but yeah, the HD home run. I mean, this is so much better than like cable TV. It's like, it gives you a lot of the same things you get from basic cable, the ridiculous amount of channels, for example, but it, it works for free, basically. Uh, now as I have the hardware, as long as the hardware never fails, it'll work indefinitely. There is the ATSC standard 3.0 coming. It's been coming for a few years now, but most of the major stations out here, I think will continue either to be broadcasting an ATSC one simultaneously as they move to ATSC three standard. But um, I don't think any channels actually in this area have even begun that process. So I think we have a few more years where this hardware is good. So pick up an old HD home run for like 60 bucks, get yourself a $17 antenna and enjoy hundreds of channels depending on where you live. Your results might vary. I am in the city. So we got pretty good signal here, here. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, go feel free to give it a thumbs up or subscribe. And if you really like this video, you can join my Patreon over here like these cool cats have. That's it for now. I'll catch you guys on the next one.